and welcome to the Money and Freeha Show. This is Money, and I am Freeha. Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year. Of course, you know, I hope、um, everybody has entered 2018. Nobody's left behind. Just checking on everybody. Well, apart from those time travels, travelers that we sometimes encounter, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, and we always, you know,、um, welcome you to 2018. And、um, of course, you know, every time you know I see the Facebook, there's always everybody's talking about the resolutions and、oh、my who、gosh. has these resolutions. I have, I have had enough of、year. this. I do not make resolutions. I, I actually do not believe in in time is passing. It is a created concept because human beings need forms to measure. So days go by, time goes by, minutes go by, and years go by. Yes. But but what is the actual construct of it, right? Yes, and we talked about it last time. A little bit. We、yeah. we touched upon it. Absolutely. But today I am so excited to be conversing with you because we have quite the phil. Philosophical, intellectual thinker, and you know,、uh, Mani, we we at one point it was all about IQ, right? Like, like the、yes. intellectual quotient, and then it went to EQ, and we talked a lot about emotional intelligence. Yes. And the topic of discussion today is actually heart intelligence, and I love this subject. I've actually researched、um, the the Heart、um, Institute.、Uh, uh, what I'm Heart Math. Yes, Heart, heart Math Man. Institute. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And also, like the vibrational frequency of our heart, the way it extends, it has a lot more neural connectors than even our brain. And the way that our our heart thinks is actually very、yes. different from from our brain.、Yes. So we will get into that topic of conversation with Gabriel. Gabriel、uh, Welcome、Hello. to our show. Welcome to our show. Delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. So it has been. We've been following you for quite some time. I know. Yeah. So thank you for accepting our invitation. I just and, yes. mentioned that it takes two to tango. Well, maybe three to tango. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> In our case here, but、Absolutely. this is my second time with you guys. And、mm-hmm. yes,、uh, yes. Really, previously, you were on our、yeah. radio show,、yeah. and now as we progressed、uh, onto TV, everyone gets to see how handsome this great ball is as well, <laughs> as well as the collection of books that he's written. Absolutely, she knows. So tell us, our audience, you know, starting off, what is heart intelligence in in a in in the In the language that we all can understand.、Um, first of all, there is no set definition. Yes. It, it, the definitions are organized, and hard intelligence is so profound that it's it's almost shocking to understand that real perception is very limited as it is from our five senses, but they are processed in the brain in different parts of the brain. However, cognition, as in perception, how do we perceive reality,、uh, ha- ha- generally happens among humans in the frontal lobe, the front part of the brain, which is the most evolved part. However, within the last seven to ten of years,、uh, neuroscientists, cardiologists, endocrinologists, they've gotten together to actually understand where is cognition actually happening. And、How、actually, I believe、it? a new discipline has been created, like neurocardiologists as well. Well, now it's neuroendocardiology. So there are three,、oh. and on top、oh. of that, I don't even think we have will have time for that. It's the、mm-hmm. quantum biological aspect of it, which is far more sophisticated. We are just at the primary stages. The science backs it up. I mean, my daughter today told me, "Dad, where are you going again?" Says, again. I have a presentation. <laughs> I, I, I keep on traveling all the time for presentations. He says, "She told me the science is clear in your book. Why don't you ask them to read the book?"、Uh-huh. I told her, "Honey, if it was as simple、so、as that, as then、is. everybody would get it." Yes.、Uh, so it, it is important to share it, especially through media.、Uh, you guys are doing a lot of good work. I've been following you、mm-hmm. up. On, on social media, so this, it's important to disseminate the information、uh, in a more palatable way, where people can actually understand uh, using uh, at least some level of science. Yeah.、Uh, I have tons of science backing it up. Yeah. But at least the comprehensive aspect, I will share with you today. 
Excellent. Thank you. And thank you for your compliment and for following thank us. Thank you. Um, you know what? I believe that at a certain time it was all about empirical evidence. And um, as I have a number of friends who are evolving more and more towards spirituality, it, the empirical evidence aspect of it is becoming a little bit less. And I'm actually happy to, to experience that because oftentimes there's things that we can believe but not necessarily see. But human beings, um, historically, have only believed it if they could see it. And yet there is so much more out there. And the fact that it's scientifically evidenced is just, you know, all the more so there for all types. Those okay. who believe and those who want the empirical evidence. Well, first of all, I want to uh, get rid of the uh, aspect of belief. Mm -hmm. Because belief to me, as a scientist, uh, is an insecure phenomenon. Belief is for phenomena that is taken as for faith. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to challenge the archetypes of faith, although I, I, I do shy away from them quite a bit because they have misrepresented it. So faith it is important. sounds more like more than belief, it's a knowing. Gnosis. Yeah. So if I use the word gnosis, mm -hmm. uh, it, the ancient Greeks called it metanoia. Mm -hmm. uh, meta means uh, more beyond. than the obvious or beyond, or it didn't even means change as in metamorphosis. Uh, the, the Kabbalists had a different view of it um, among the uh, Jewish uh, theology. Mm -hmm. Then you had a Tasavvuf among the Muslims, which is totally ostracized um, uh, with uh, orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. Among the Christians, you had uh, people like uh, Meister Akkad uh, and William Blake. Uh, mm -hmm. They were uh, talking about gnosis. So the whole idea of experiential knowledge yeah. far outweighs the little notion of belief. So when people sometimes ask me as a scientist, do you believe in the thing, whatever we call it, yeah. God or yeah. Allah, Elohim, yeah. um, Bhagwan, it's immaterial. It doesn't mean anything. As soon as you canonize it, you have actually lost the idea because mm -hmm. it's about experiencing it. So to, to experience divi the, the divi divine creative energy in the universe, or whatever you might want to call it, is far more scientific, pragmatic, uh, experiential, rather than the notion of belief, which is somebody else's word, mm -hmm. which you have to accept. Uh, but you always doubt it. But you have, you have an experience of something, yeah. empirical, as well as direct. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, it has, it has even been called, by Buddha called it Satori. It's in Zen Buddhism. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also called Samadhi in the Rig Veda. So different traditions have called it different things. Yes. But I like Carl Jung's definition, the mm -hmm. Swiss psychiatrist. He's one of my favorites. So in analytical psychology, he, he shuns away from the idea of belief. And it was one of the most profound writings I read about experiential gnosis, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the uh, idea of, uh, of belief. I, I do not want to undermine uh, people who have beliefs, but uh, it's a work in progress, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, yes. and as I, you were sharing with us prior to us beginning the show, that you have actually put in like 25 years of, of research into, into all of this. Well, my... Uh, Research started uh, as, as a biologist, then moving into history of science. My post-graduation at Leeds University was in that field. Mm -hmm. and so Leeds in the UK? In the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, and my main intuitive drive as a scientist and was evolution. Yeah. Evolution is one of the most fascinating, uh, fascinating aspects in science, and we have so much evidence. Uh, we even have ev evidence... Uh, from molecular biology lately, yeah. which is completely uh, uh, clear. It is not a theory. And then when, when I read the actual erstwhile primary original source references of all the wisdom traditions and faiths of the world, mm -hmm. word for word, there is no controversy. The controversy so no comes from... No, no. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the first person to even uh, explain 
uh, evolution scientifically was al Jahiz in 9th century in Morocco. Mm -hmm. And the book is called Kitab al Hayvanat, which is and the book of Manal. And he predates Darwin? By close to 900 years. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And the, the book was actually uh, copied by uh, Darwin's grandfather, who was, yeah. uh, uh, who was uh, surgeon to the to, to, to royalty in, U mm -hmm. in England yeah. uh, in, the, in the early half of uh, the 19th, uh, 18th century. Yeah. And Erasmus Darwin actually wrote a book called Zoonomia, which I have mm -hmm. read. And I actually, uh, he mentions al Jahiz's significant contribution in his mm -hmm. seven volume uh, book of animals. And he, yes. he explains that in there and he says uh, in, in the religious texts of all faiths, uh, including the Torah, the Injil, the Bible, the Rig Veda, mm -hmm. uh, the Talmud uh, from, from the Hebrew traditions, which, which I study because uh, they are actually precursors to science. But yeah. we have this compartmental fight against religion, rightly so, because mm -hmm. the theologians have completely destroyed it. Their, their, their interpretations are um, charlatan. Oh, I would my call gosh. Them. Sorry to use that term <laughs> because... It's mm -hmm. a male-dominated perspective on, mm -hmm. on on fundamentalistic interpretations. So, so if I may quote that directly, that uh, patriarchy has played a, a big part of this because it is based on a handicap that mm -hmm. uh, men have evolved with. Yeah. That handicap uh, is known as the fight, fright, flight response in, yes. in the human uh, limbic system mm -hmm. of, of the brain and moreover the reptilian part of the brain. And the male brain is still far more uh, stuck there. Mm -hmm. And that has transpired into religion, into, into the, even the science, which has become so uh, atheistic, fundamentalistic science. Very and, rigid. And, and um, Richard Dawkins comes to my mind, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. I yeah. read their books, and I enjoy what they write. Yes. But I, I, I part right at the at the last moment where they attribute the world uh, as a machine, mm -hmm. and then everything is random and chance. It, it is not. It is it is uh, the the very thing that there is design and there is artistry in in nature is proof enough. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for as a scientist, yeah. so just to mention that that mm -hmm. uh, the the aspect of life being created from water and then moving into ve mineral and uh, then vegetative, which is plant life, and eventually to animal and mm -hmm. then to human, literally phase by phase is mentioned in all the faith texts of yeah. this world. But that has been completely um, shunned away, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 the idea of Adam and Eve. Those are allegorical stories for mm -hmm. people to comprehend in a kind of metaphorical perspective. Yeah. They, they, are, they are aphorismic in nature, but you, you, you wouldn't be able to make people understand uh, 2,000 years yeah. ago such scientific phenomena. So now we have it's more it. analogous. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. So those are analogies. Yes. Uh, it's... it's it, it's, it, it's something so that we could comprehend mm -hmm. you know, an earlier form of uh, a non-scientific uh, world where people would understand stories and yes. metaphors. Mm -hmm. uh, like children, you know, we, we, we put them to sleep every night, we, yeah. we tell them a nice cute story and they enjoy But the that. main thing is the moral of the story, <laughs> not like Jack and the Beanstalk, <laughs> the but, but, but the moral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, Joseph Campbell is powerful mm -hmm. in that oh, area. He's, amazing. he's fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, amazing. The, the power of myth, he calls it. Yes. So not the literal myth, the, mm -hmm. the, the metaphor of the myth is, is far more important. So a couple of things that, that come to mind, like for myself, um, learning about evolution, it was always Darwin going to the Galapagos Islands and mm -hmm. then observing the, the animals on, on that island, but it actually predates to earlier times. And very much so... Lamar also yes. did a lot of work in... Alfred Russell Wallace also did a lot of work in this. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Darwin's amazing. Not many people have actually read uh, the book called On the Origin of Species yeah. by Means of Natural Selection. That's mm -hmm. the full title. Um, I, I have, I've read it multiple times. It was part of one of my uh, theses at university. Yes. And my professor, Dr. Ray McNeil Alexander, who's a world-renowned expert in 
biomechanics, mm -hmm. uh, I supplemented this data to him that Darwin had borrowed from his granddad, and yeah. unfortunately, he had not mentioned even his grandfather. Mm -hmm. Not to mention that's Al why Jahiz. we have citations these <laughs> days. You know, exactly. no more plagiarism. <laughs> now, it, uh, that was mm -hmm. my uh, undergrad thesis, and yes. uh, luckily. Uh, Ray McNeil Alexander was such a profound scientist that he wrote on my thesis, I'm pleased to have this information that I didn't know of. I mean, this is, he was like a, um, he was a scientific icon uh, when I was at the university there. He, he looks like Darwin, actually. Yeah. He's a British <laughs> chap. Uh -huh. And um, I, I venerated him for a long time. And uh, But he, he's, the first time I met him, there is a lecture hall filled with to 300 students, and the first, for two minutes he doesn't say anything, he's just looking at us, uh, and it was exhausted to, to stay mm -hmm. silent, and then he eventually says, tell me something new. <laughs> uh, it just went like a nail into my heart, and mm -hmm. since that, mm -hmm. I just go and find out new stuff. I'm not satisfied with status quo in any field, and that's true science. It truly yes. is. It is. Looking over and above and beyond. So when we return shortly after this break, we will continue our conversation with the very fascinating uh, Gabriel Iqbal. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. ICC Immigration के R D M D और उनकी professional team head office में सिसागा से आपको serve कर रही हैं business visa, student visa, work permit, sponsorship या किसी भी approved category में आप अपने प्यारों को Canada बुलाना चाहते हैं तो अभी call कर लें 905-461-2424 it's 905-461-2424 ICC Immigration जब भी बात होती है कार एक्सीडेंट की तो हम तलाश करते हैं एक लॉयर को और हमारे पास मौजूद हैं डेविड हेमोफार Yes, thank you. I'm David Himmelfarb. I have over 30 years experience in personal injury matters. We have a downtown Toronto location with over 22 lawyers to service you. And we speak your language, Urdu, Punjabi and Hindi. We have a great community liaison, Anjum Kureshi. Aap hume call kar sakte hain 416-570-0157. Knowledge, integrity, experience, and service. These are really the elements you are looking for in a good financial professional. Whether it is life and critical insurance to protect your family and business, retirement savings to live comfortably, education savings to educate your children, group health benefits to safeguard your employees, or travel and super visa insurance for your friends and family. That's what Zaid Syed of Arouge Financial brings to your table. Call him at 905-624-0008 or visit arougefinancial.com. आपकी पसंद और कड़ाई पॉइंट की पेशकश टोरंटो में बैठकर कराची हाईवे और लाहौर लक्ष्मी चौक की चिकन लैम या व्हील की कड़ाई को एंजॉय कीजिए कड़ाही पॉइंट नाउ सेकंड लोकेशन फिंच एंड वेस्टर्न रवायती जायके कड़ाही पॉइंट क्या जमाना आ गया है ना मोहब्बत रही ना चीजों में लज्जत हां बाऊजी सब कुछ बदल गया दुरुस्त बस ये नहीं बदला केक रस बचपन में छीन छीन कर खाता था माशाल्लाह वही खूबी वही लसन बरखुरदा लीजिए हाजिर है केसीबी केक रस शुरू से अब तक एक सी लसन केसीबी केक रस मोर शॉपिंग यस फॉर माय होम Uh, welcome to Pan Am Blinds Limited. Uh, my name is uh, Bobby, and I would like to introduce our very newest uh, product. It is only with us, with Pan Am Blinds, uh, in improved. It's combination of uh, um, uh, and man. silver shades, so Venus shades, so or the Shangri-La shades. So it's a very unique and new product in different color. It's an energy saver. You can save your 85 percent energy. And also, it is uh, it has child safety features over here. If you see here, if it goes down, it will open itself, and you will see through. 
from this but ultraviolet rays controlled no uv light will come in and you can see out and people they can see very slightly please come to our store and see how many beautiful colors we do have and enjoy your comfort of life huzur کینیڈین مسلم فورم کے زیر اہتمام چھ جنوری بروز ہفتہ شام چھ بجے سواگت بینکٹ ہال سکس نائن نائن ون مل کریک ڈرائیو وساگا میں تیسری سالانہ عید میلاد النبی صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کانفرنس منعقد کی جا رہی ہے جس میں عالم اسلام کے عظیم نات خان سید سبی الدین رحمانی نات رسول مقبول صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کا نظرانہ پیش کریں گے خواتین کے لیے علیحدہ نشستوں کا انتظام کیا گیا ہے پروگرام میں داخلہ اور پارکنگ فری ہے پروگرام کے اختتام پر لنگر کا بھی اہتمام کیا گیا ہے مزید معلومات کے لیے شاہد مغل صاحب سے فور ون سکس فور سکس فور زیرو فور ٹو یا محمد کامل صاحب سے فور ون سکس فائیو سیون سیون ایٹ نائن فور سکس فور ون سکس فائیو سیون سیون ایٹ نائن فور سکس پہ رابطہ کیجیے اب حاصل کریں ریئل اسٹیٹ پری کنسٹرکشن کی ایکسکلوسو ڈیلز اربن ریئلٹی پوائنٹ بروکریج کے ساتھ جیسے ایم سٹی کانڈوز ڈاؤن ٹاؤن مسز کا لائف اسٹائل اینڈ ٹرانزٹ سٹی کانڈوز ایٹ ڈاؤن ٹاؤن وان جہاں سے ہے ٹی ٹی سی سب وے کی ڈائریکٹ ایکسیس ٹی ٹیچ ہوم اور فری ہول ٹاؤن ہاؤسز کی ایکسکلوسو ڈیلز اور ری سیلز کے لیے ابھی کال کریں موسٹ آنسٹ اینڈ ایکسپیرینس ریئلٹرز اور سلان بے ایٹ فور ون سکس سیون سیون نائن سکس زیرو فور سیون اور عشرت لائک ایٹ فور ون سکس سیون زیرو سیون One eight six four. The law professionals at TM Law, providing professional services in the GTA in the areas of civil litigation, criminal defense, family matters, and real estate. Serving the community in English, Punjabi, Hindi, and Urdu. For more information, call Tahir Majid, Barrister and Solicitor at 647-838-4773 or you can visit TahirLaw.ca. Welcome back, everyone. So, Mani, we had said that we would be talking about heart intelligence, but Gabriel is such a fascinating man that our conversation kind of, of gears everywhere. Absolutely. And it's always amazing, you know, when I start talking to Gabriel, you know, we, I can just hear him talk like hours and I just, I'm just like, we I never get bored. Interrupt. Exactly. I never get bored, you know. He's amazing, amazing person. So getting back to heart intelligence and my question was what exactly is heart intelligence and what's the paradigm shift and I really want to know you know, on, and, and like very, like Let, my level, you know, because I'm a very evidence-based person. Let's just get to the science of it. Exactly, the science of it. As is the case in cardiology and uh, neurology and even endocrinology, these three divisions coming up together uh, as a collective team, especially in the Institute of Heart Math in California. There's close to, I believe, 70 PhDs working on this, and... I am researching this subject for the last 10 years. And uh, this book has close to around 300 references at the back, mm -hmm. which are empirically peer-reviewed in top journals of the world. Yeah, BMJ journals. as well as AMJ, American Medical Journal and mm -hmm. BMJ. So I'm going to uh, give you like five salient features, and then we'll probably dive into it directly. Um, I have diagrams in the book to elucidate uh, the actual scientific evidence of how, mm -hmm. uh, it, what, what does it mean to be heart intelligence and what's cognition, where is perception actually happening more than uh, the, 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 the five senses and um, the frontal lobe perceiving reality or the visual cortex at the back of the uh, brain uh, perceiving uh, what is called 400 to 700 nanometers of visual perception, mm -hmm. uh, which is again very limited, these five senses. So the real perception, what we would call consciousness, and I uh, say the word elaborately because nobody knows what it is. Mm -hmm. It has not Even uh, though it's been used described. Quite frequently. It, is, it is used, it's, and it, it, it keeps me up um, late hours. It keeps and you conscious. It, and it quite keeps a me <laughs> conscious, and uh, the, the world goes around it. But now we are we are we are uh, trying to un uh, getting more towards the idea that consciousness is actually a phenomena that is linked to the heart as opposed to the brain and that's mm -hmm. what i'm going to delve into directly yes. so the first thing that we have found 
uh, with all the scientific evidence using uh, cardiac encephalograms and cardiac uh, EEGs and ECGs, um, which are which is equipment used to monitor uh, heart uh, hearts, uh, heartbeats, yes. uh, systolic, the systolic, the, the the way the heart operates, um, and we now know that. Uh, the heart is actually emitting an electromagnetic field, mm -hmm. and we can measure it. We can measure it 360 degrees around the body. Uh, it is not an esoteric woo-woo phenomena. Yeah. Uh, it cannot be dismissed because we know uh, how far it is currently with our equipment that we have, three to four feet currently. Oh, really? But mm -hmm. some I, scientists I, I believe it like is ev meters. even more, mm -hmm. even more. But according to quantum biologists, yes. Uh, we now know that it is connected to everything. So I, I hold my case there, but at mm -hmm. least the one that we currently can measure uh, is empirical, evidence-based, uh, three to four uh, feet, mm -hmm. if not more. Yeah. I'm just being conservative still yeah. uh, and empirical. Uh, and again, the second most important thing is the, the connection between the brain and the heart is a nerve which is the inform information center of the brain, it's called the vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. So it's the, it's the information superhighway of, of, of the body. Yeah. It connects the heart directly to the brain, it, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and eventually the pituitary gland, which is actually known as the most powerful gland in the body. Again, this gland has been not studied properly uh, because of uh, a Newtonian understand of, of a mechanistic body. Mm -hmm. uh, the pineal gland is supposed to be uh, the, uh, the gland that secretes opiates, mm -hmm. um, melatonin, uh, uh, serotonin, serotonin. serotonin, and also DMT. Mm -hmm. uh, DMT is far more superior, and it actually, heal, when, when we go to sleep, it just stops, the, the yeah. pineal gland. So it's also linked to the heart, which I'm going to come to now. Mm -hmm. So the, it's the heart that actually kicks off well-being in the body by exciting the pineal gland. And how that happens is wired using an electromagnetic energy. I'll save the esoteric, the, uh, not, I will say the, uh, the, the spiritual part later. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the science. So what do we know? So this vagus nerve is connected between the heart and the brain. And the heart is sending, first of all, more signals to the brain than the other way around. That is yeah. clear. Right. We know that. It's not that the brain is telling the heart, okay, now you're going to beat yeah. so many times per, per hour, mm -hmm. now you're going to pump blood. That is just one, one of the functions of the heart, pumping blood. Uh, far more importantly, the heart has, the, I have to use my hands, I'm sorry. That's right. There are four chambers in the yes. heart. The atriums mm -hmm. are on the top, right mm -hmm. and left. Ventricles are at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's a conical shape. The left ventricle is slightly enlarged. So the right atrium just behind the two atria are a particular bun bundle of cells. It, they are called the intrinsic cardiac ganglia. Mm -hmm. Now, ganglia is a nerve bundle. Yeah. We never thought that we would find them in the heart. Mm -hmm. So, lo and behold, according to research, we found them five to seven years ago. So, we thought, okay, That's this is very just... very recent uh, yeah. in, in the whole yeah, in, in history the, in of science. In history of science, it's fairly, fairly recent. I mean, I talked to cardiologists. They haven't read it. It's not in the mm -hmm. Gray's Anatomy as yet. Yeah. Papers have entered BMJ and AMJ, uh, the top peer-reviewed journals, medical mm -hmm. journals. Still, because we have this view of the body as a machine, because the whole Newtonian view of the world as a machine, it's again, hijacks this. We do mm -hmm. not want to mix it with anything to do with consciousness, which, which they shy away to explain. So let's just get into the real thing. So the, the, the ganglia, first of all, these nerve bundles, they, they have been, first of all, they're scattered around, mm -hmm. but they bundle around more over towards the atria, especially the right atria. Mm -hmm. In front of the right area, the right atria is the, uh, is the, the there are two centers. It's called the atrioventricular node and sinoventricular node. Mm -hmm. It's just sitting like that. And when we are in the wombs of our mothers at four weeks, mm -hmm. the first electrical spark kicks in mm -hmm. out of nowhere. Yeah. And uh, me as a scientist, I, I have lost a lot of time to investigate. I cannot take it uh, uh, as, as gospel truth. I need mm -hmm. to find out how. Yeah. 
Yeah. Why not? But when we talk to medical experts, they say, we don't want to know. This mm -hmm. is nothing to do with science. It just happens. It just happens. Uh, 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 my, my, uh, excuse me. My argument is, are you a real scientist or are you a machine? Because uh -huh. scientists are supposed to ask questions. Absolutely. You're not a program which says, I, don't, I can't compute. You, mm -hmm. you, have to under, you have to find out. At least keep the window open. To, uh, of, to the uh, of, 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 of empiricism, yes, yes. of experimental evidence. So at four weeks it kicks in mm -hmm. and, you know, I'll go to the spiritual part later, the, the, the way the sp uh, spiritual texts explain it. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I, I go with them entirely, but um, they are a precursor to, to, to go and investigate scientifically. So mm -hmm. for, as, as far as I'm concerned, there, there is no rift between the spiritual aspect and, and the scientific aspect. So why don't we investigate that? Okay. Currently, we don't know. It happens out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. When we die, it's exactly where the spark stops. Okay. And that spark creates uh, uh, a cascade of sparks between the uh, sinoventricular node and the atrioventricular node. Mm -hmm. And it shoots off uh, an electrical impulse, which Through gets the, the body alive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, or dead. <laughs> yeah. Or the dead, in, in the case then. when you stop. Mm -hmm. So that is <clears throat> how it starts. Yes. That kicks off consciousness. Mm -hmm. And the ganglia, they are ten times larger than any ganglia in the brain. Amazing. Ten times larger, mm -hmm. if not more. Now, I, it's I have not a, just a the quick science. question about that. So oftentimes when we're sad or, or mourning, we... I know it from my own experience. It hurts, yeah. Exactly. It, hurts, it yeah. is a physical pain in the heart. As it's weighing yeah. on your chest, so yes. to speak. Yeah. And yeah. it must be that consciousness. Like, is it the ganglia sending off those signals? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, rightly stated. So what's happening in the intrinsic cardiac ganglia mm -hmm. uh, is you're trying to cognate information. Bereavement, sorrow, pain, happiness, laughter, whatever it is, you know, yeah. uh, uh, on e either ends of the, s of the spectrum, I emotional yeah. uh, information especially. So we are actually hardwired for empathy. Let me explain why. So this vas uh, the vagus nerve, which is connecting uh, uh, the heart to the brain, mm -hmm. is also connected to the optic nerve. Yeah. Now, optic nerve is massive. It's, it's, uh, other than the vagus nerve, it's the other nerve, which is almost the size of my finger. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. it's, it's very thick. And it goes... If I enlarge it, you know, mm -hmm. we have to see relative size. So the, the optic nerve is coming out, it's connecting the, the, to the retina. Mm -hmm. And the retina is nothing, it's just like a machine, to be honest, you know. Uh, it's, 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 the image is inverting at the back because of the convex nature of the eye. At the back of the retina, it's processing the information and taking it up. It's just um, uh, Interpreting spectra, the spectrum of, of, of light, 400 to 700 mm -hmm. nanometer in color. There is much more, you know, different animals perceive it differently. But we have that limited perception. It goes into the vis visual cortex. But again, mm -hmm. the, the way the heart is interpreting this in the brain makes the big difference. Mm -hmm. This is where meditation comes, the prayer, the fasting. Yeah. The, the, the symbolism of ritual now mm -hmm. has an actual biological connotation. Mm -hmm. It is not just to please some uh, buddy up there who's, who has, who's not interested. Come on. I mean, yeah. Yeah. somebody who creates the, this universe yes. is interested in your rituals, yeah. give me a break. Yeah. It's, it's, it, you, it is good for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, then we, we the, the bigotry of religiosity is then we compete whose rituals are better. I know. Than it's it's ridiculous. It's problematic. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, all the ritual, meditation is great. Ritual mm -hmm. is great. Do it, you know, to excite your consciousness, yeah. no, to, to create what is called uh, heart opening, I call it. Mm -hmm. so, well, also what you had mentioned previously, that uh, everything that we see is interpreted basically by our brain and how the brain is linked to the pituitary, uh, which releases the serotonin. Because oftentimes when we gland. see... Yeah. Oh, sorry, pineal, pineal gland. Pineal yeah. gland. Um, when we see something that we, we like or we see someone doing a good deed or... Um, does something fabulous or beautiful, it is the serotonin which is released and we just naturally right. feel now, good. I just want to really go deeply into that because yes. what's actually happening in the eye, mm -hmm. the evolution of the human eye biologically is very fascinating. How did it evolve? And it's just, yeah. uh, human beings see, animals see 
prior to that, when we were in our early primitive evolutionary stages, we couldn't. So mm -hmm. where did this eye in come from? Form. <laughs> now, now, if you look at the eye, the eye has a particular uh, uh, aspect to it uh, uh, in the optic nerve. Mm -hmm. Whenever you see somebody in pain, let's say I, I prick a needle into my hand, yeah. you're going to immediately feel a nerve response, yeah. no matter what your denomination, culture, perception, mm -hmm. even if, God forbid, you're a psychopath, mm -hmm. you will feel that. Although you might hijack that emotion because of your tr uh, negative training in case of a psychopath whose yeah. brains are damaged. Uh, however, you will feel that. Okay. Now, that is going through the relay neuron and telling your brain, help the person. Right. We are hardwired for empathy. Mm -hmm. Biologically. And altruism as well. It sounds and like. Altruism. Mm -hmm. it, it's hardwired. But because of uh, our Stone Age mentality mm -hmm. of might is right and wrongly attributed again to Darwin, evolution of the fittest, survival yeah. of the fittest, it is not so. If you read his book on the origin of species uh, by means of natural selection, he actually uses that term just a couple of times. Moreover, he is talking that I've about empathy. It, yeah. is more, um, it's not the survival of, of the fittest as in strength, but the one that is the most adaptable to, to his to or change. her environment and change. To change. Now, yes. when he, what he means by adaptation and change, mm -hmm. which he took from al is clearly, it's called the web of intricacies and interdependencies. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the way Jahiz describes it, he says, can't you see how cooperation works in evolution? Mm -hmm. How animals... Uh, there is a, a niche established and there is a balance in every niche that the, they don't take more than what they need. Mm -hmm. They will not overdo that there is a balance. You know, I think the movie not Lion King explains yeah, that. Absolutely. The circle, life, way, right? the circle of life, right? The circle of life, yeah. <laughs> so th those were two aspects. There's a couple more and because I can, uh, you know, I'm just, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, keeping an keeping eye on the time. Mm -hmm. We have, the heart has 40 to 60 times more electrical energy than the brain. And it sends 5,000 times more magnetic, the magnetic field of the heart is 5,000 times more stronger than the entire brain. Mm -hmm. So what, what this research has also shown on top of all this evidence, which is measurable yeah. for, uh, for, for people uh, in the scientific age to understand it, not only perception, consciousness, but hormone called atriopeptin has been recognized to be produced in the heart. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the most potent anti-stress hormone that counteracts the effect of cortisol. Cortisol wow. is cortisol. a stress hormone. Yeah. Now, the way you perceive reality uh, in a, what I call it second attention in psychology, which means you, you when a negative information approaches you, you are in this uh, primitive response to, to fight back, to react. Fight, flight, or, fight, or, or exactly. freeze. As, as yeah. The five F. Yeah. Three yeah. Fight or <laughs> So, that is more over in the male brain because we were mm -hmm. hunters, males. The, yeah. the women were gatherers. Mm -hmm. They created language, society. They reared uh, the next generation. They created civilization. And mm -hmm. there is a hegemony even in science that it, the, 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 it's the male who, who created uh, civilization. It's not true. Mm -hmm. male actually, the male mind is not built for civilization, unfortunately. It is really barbaric, and you can see it in the media now mm -hmm. with all the champions we have our le as our leaders. <laughs> now. So <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to even go into, into that direction because that's a waste mm -hmm. of space, to be honest. Absolutely. So well, we we, I'm trying to bring this into mainstream mm -hmm. curriculum. Yes. Uh, I, I believe he, that you are teaching in yes, some. I, I, I do teach as well, and yeah. I, I I work with IB, uh, which is International Baccalaureate, which yeah. is a Swiss curriculum, mm -hmm. and there is a particular program called Theory of Knowledge, and the Theory of Knowledge program is a two-year diploma program, yeah. which is supersedes any program in IB. Mm -hmm. And what is it? How do we know what we know? Oh, well, it's the Theory mm -hmm. of Knowledge, right? Yes. <laughs> Don't take it for granted. It's yeah. called Socratic thinking, yes. critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Criticize and be critical of everything, but empirically, mm -hmm. yes. not for the heck of it. Exactly. Uh, Merit-worthy, mm -hmm. evidence-based, doubt, reason, question, and then you are bound to go and find how 
life on this planet works. Yeah. Well, as they say, seek and you shall find, right? So Absolutely. ask those questions right. and get those answers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can definitely have this conversation and never any conversation and on yes. and on. As I said, you know, earlier, we can just hear him talk and not just, you know, but unfortunately, there is a time limit and constraints to the show. And I really want to mention before we end this show is uh, his upcoming new uh, publication. Of course, you have another book published uh, recently, and it's had been about a year, which is Encyclopedia um, about the Golden Age of um, Science and Civilization in Islam, and I would really like to highlight this book. And so, um, just, uh, I had an yeah, opportunity, yeah. Mm-hmm. and um, this, is, this is the one book, and actually um, I am definitely going on Amazon and ordering my copy because yeah. I had an opportunity to actually go through its pages. It has beautiful illustrations with the pictures, and um, can you just send, tell us a little bit about this book? Because well, uh, um, this, we had a great this, conversation about this book, yeah. but again, I really, um, I think we'll definitely have you back to talk more in detail about this. But for our audience, you know, um, this is one thing that mm-hmm. we want to know. A takeaway from <laughs> takeaway from today. It truly is beautiful, beautifully yes. illustrated, and the depth of information in it is remarkable. Absolutely. It is the majority of, of uh, Gabriel Iqbal's research yes. over a vast number of years all put together into into this encyclopedia and we do recommend that you well you know what yes we do recommend it Absolutely. and he is available on Amazon so please go and check him out he has a number of publications uh, Gabriel Iqbal and I know that you will not be disappointed especially for those of you who are philosophical who are spiritual who are scientific you know uh not to categorize. And this Absolutely. is one thing, this is my takeaway from my conversation with, with Gabriel, that we do have a tendency to put things into neat little boxes because that's the way that we have been taught to um, store and yes. uh, interpret information, but it doesn't have to be the case. Absolutely. So we will p- uh, put all of this information on a Facebook page and you can definitely find it. And if you want to connect directly with Gabriel Iqbal, you can find him on a Facebook and there is a link below. You can find him through our the Mani and Fariha show page also. Thank you very much, Gabriel, yes, for being here so with us today. I'm delighted to be with you. Anytime. Yes, and we will have you back because we Absolutely. have not even skimmed the service. No, we didn't. We mm-hmm. haven't. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for watching our show. Um, keep watching our show. Provide us with your feedback. We are always looking for your feedback and how we can improve our show. And of course, you know, what would you like to see? Uh, this was one of, you know, what we. We check Sometimes we have a tendency to absolutely. indulge ourselves of so what we this want to see and hear. Yes. I know, totally. <laughs> but nonetheless, we love your feedback, and we will have another wonderful show for you next week. And until then, goodbye and God bless. Bye. When you or your loved one is injured in a car or slip and fall accident, one of the most important decisions you're going to make is the lawyer that you hire. At Alam Law, we take pride in the fact that every person who calls for a free consultation speaks to one of our personal lawyers, not just a legal assistant or agent. Call Alam Law at 416-625-2636 for a free consultation. And remember, you do not pay anything unless I win your case. रोशन मुस्तकबिल और अपनों का साथ जन्नत से कम नहीं आप भी कनाडा को अपना घर बना सकते हैं ग्रीन स्टार इमिग्रेशन सॉल्यूशंस के रेगुलेटेड कैनेडियन इमिग्रेशन कंसलटेंट शहबाज अकबर के साथ मास्टर ऑफ बिजनेस क्लास इमिग्रेशन एक्सप्रेस एंट्री स्किल क्लास इमिग्रेशन रेफ्यूजी क्लेम एंड फैमिली स्पॉन्सरशिप्स सो कॉल नाउ एट 416-508-3989 Green Star Immigration Solutions Canada It's never too late to follow your dreams
Haveli Grill and Hilltop Promotions in association with Buzzmax.ca proudly presents Punjabi Lok Virsa. Enjoy the live performance by the living legend of Patiala family, Ustad Hamid Ali Khan. With emerging folk talent Noora Lal at Hammerson Hall Living Arts Centre, Mississauga on January 13th at 7pm. For tickets call 905-306-6000 or 416-910-2355. Sponsored by Pakistan International Airlines and Sher Atta. If you are looking for a reliable, professional, and affordable travel agency in your town, then your search is over. Global Travel & Tours is your personal travel partner. Our dedicated staff at Mississauga, Jeddah, and Islamabad is always ready to make your trip hassle-free, memorable, and cost-effective. We will assist you with hotel reservations, the transportation, visa assistance, and travel insurance. We are the number one pilgrimage specialist for Hajj, Umrah, as well as Ziyarat to Iran and Iraq. Global Travel and Tours is a one-stop solution for your travel, immigration, and forex needs. We are IATA-approved agents and an authorized Umrah agent. To book your holiday or Umrah package, please give us a call right now at 1-877-275-3555. We look forward to hearing from you. زندگی کے مشکل لمحوں میں آپ کو چاہیے ایک کانفیڈنٹ اور اسٹرانگ ریپرزنٹیشن جیسے سید ایم رضا پرسنل انجری اینڈ لٹیگیشن لائر فرام سید لا کار ایکسیڈنٹ یا سلپ اینڈ فال ایکسیڈنٹ کی صورت میں ساؤتھ ایشین کمیونٹی کی ریلائبل اینڈ اسٹرانگ ریپرزنٹیشن یعنی آپ کی اپنی زبان میں سال ہر سال سے کمیونٹی کی خدمت میں پیش پیش سید ایم رضا پرسنل انجری اینڈ لٹیگیشن لائر فرام سید لا اپوائنٹمنٹ کے لیے ابھی کال کریں فور 